So you do know a little bit of redstone, but some of it still don't make sense. How do you make pistons go up and down when there's more than one piston? How do you make these item elevators? Well, in this part three of my redstone tutorial series, I am gonna show you how to do it. And none of it is as complicated as this. That's just scary. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, and welcome to another episode in my Redstone 101 tutorials. And this is part three, and probably the last part in this three-part series, because it's a three-part series, and this is part three. And today, we're going to take a little look at some item elevators, really, really simple stuff, so you can move stuff about, and also some pistons, how you can shoot pistons off, and also shoot double extending pistons off, which means you can do some clever doors and stuff like that. In the background, you can see the farm world. These are some of the good applications of these pistons and elevators etc so we are going to get into some of that now but before we do if you enjoy it please do make sure you hit that like button it would be really good to know that you're enjoying this little series of three videos and if you do enjoy it then maybe i can answer some questions in the comments below if there's anything that i've not covered in the three episodes also if you've not done it already please do make sure you hit that subscribe button and straight after hitting that subscribe button make sure you hit the notifications bell and if you're already subscribed and you've not hit the notifications bell, you can see how to do it on the screen now. It is so very easy. Please do make sure you do that. And once you have, let's get into this video. Now this first bit is gonna be pretty familiar for you, especially if you've been watching my farm tutorial series. I use this quite a lot, and it's for when you want to raise an item up a couple of levels. So you've maybe collected it on level one, and you wanna chuck it up to level three or four. So what you wanna do is get yourself a dropper, and then another dropper by pressing crouch, like that uh, so you've got a two high dropper one running into the other we've got hopper that's doing our collection for us running into the back of that dropper so these have come maybe from i don't know a hopper minecart collection system something like that and they are running items into that bottom dropper but we want that bottom dropper to shoot stuff up it needs to know there's something in it so we've got to tell it there's something in it and the way we do that is using in the first part a comparator now that comparator will detect when something is in that dropper and it will light up and it's very simple as soon as it lights up that generates a redstone signal but it's a very very weak one so we've got to amplify it make it bigger by putting a repeater on the back of it and then that repeater runs into a block i'm using purple terracotta because it's really purple and that's brilliant and then get a little bit of redstone stick it there that redstone will suck the signal out of that block get a repeater pop it there and that allows you to go past here um, and stick another piece of redstone there. Now, all that's left to do is to put this into subtract mode. So a comparator goes into subtract mode and that will create a one tick clock. Now, we spoke about clocks in part two. And if you've not seen part two, please do go and have a look because there's some really good stuff in that. And when one item goes into this uh, little dropper here, that is going to start up a one tick clock pulse that will repeat and repeat and repeat. So I'm just going to demonstrate that by putting one item into that. And you can see, look, it's ticking and ticking and ticking and ticking and ticking. And that's what happens if something gets passed along these hoppers into that dropper. So it's very easy to get a dropper to tell the comparator that there's Summit in it. You literally just have to put Summit in it. This circuit could not be more simple, but now we've got to get the comparator to remind the dropper that there is Summit in it so it can spit it out because it's got a very bad memory. Now this is an even easier circuit. All we do is we come off the side of this with one piece of redstone there, another piece of redstone there, then get ourselves a repeater, slap that straight into that bottom dropper. Now what that's gonna do is when a signal comes out of that through the comparator that's going to send the signal around here that we've already shown then it's going to come out to the side as well and it's going to shoot into that repeater and that's going to shoot a signal into that bottom dropper now that bottom dropper will go oh hang on a minute there's something in me and it will spit it out but what's even better is it will give enough power for that top dropper to say yeah i know i'm going to spit it out as well and it will shoot it into that chest so i'm just going to demonstrate that now if i come over here and i get this um hopper and I look at here and I just shove a sh item in. You can see the red pulse that it went there. And if we look, it's up there. Let's empty it again just to show you that I didn't just put it in there before I started filming. Because some of you go, oh, I you put it in there before you started filming. No, I didn't. I put it in there 
through this hopper, on comes the power, open it up, and it's back again. That's brilliant. And it works if you put loads of stuff in it as well. So if we just stick a load of bits in it like that, eventually they go into those um, hoppers. You can see the flashing, the flashing, the flashing, the flashing, and flashing. And when it finishes flashing, they're all at the top. And if I collect them, you can see I've got all my stuff back. So that is a really simple item elevator. But that circuit is only good if you want to put it up to spots. If you want to make it go up further, you've got to do something ever so slightly different. So the next one is basically an upgrade of that one. So again, we want to get ourselves um, some droppers, but we're going to tower them up this time. So press uh, shift click. There we go. So we've got a tower of droppers there and we're going to do exactly the same clock that we have got over here. So let's stick ourselves a comparator in there and tick that into subtract mode. We then want to put ourselves a repeater out of that. That's got to run into a block. This looks very familiar to you, I hope. We've only just done it. That goes like that. That gets a repeater there. You could also use a comparator there if you wanted to, but why bother when you can just use a repeater? Stick that in there, and that is your clock. And we can get some um, hoppers run into the back of that. Exactly like that. So now with this one, we need to make sure that we power all the way up to the top. Let's just stick a, a chest on top of that so as it's there and I don't forget otherwise it'll just spew it all out. So to do that we need to have some power coming this way to create a power tower and the way we're going to do that is with a redstone torch there and a repeater there. Now that redstone torch will power that repeater and that redstone torch will be turned off when this detects a signal in the dropper that puts power through that into the block which turns that off. So, I mean, it's really, really simple. I don't mean to make it too complicated. It really is ever so simple. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to create um, a zipper tower that goes all the way up to the top um, without, you know, this is not complicated. It's just literally a zigzag of blocks going all the way up to the tops. And the, these must be um, redstone conductive blocks. So you couldn't use glass or something transparent like that. It just wouldn't work. And then stick yourself a torch in each gap like that and then same going backwards that will turn them off so you've, what you've done is create a series of not gates and when items go into the bottom here that will shoot power all the way up and that will just persistently chuck power into these hoppers so they go all the way to the top now I'll demonstrate that by putting some items in so if I just put a load of stuff in there, all 64 go in there. You can hear the ticking. So that's saying, we've got stuff in here, boys. We better start making some signal. And that's doing exactly that. You can see it's shooting stuff up and up and up and up and up. And it's still relatively quick. It doesn't take very long at all for those items to pass up the elevator. So there you go, that's done. That probably took about 15, 20 seconds or something like that. And you'll notice in here, we've not got all 64 of our stone left. We've only got 60. Now the reason for that is this stops as soon as the bottom one is empty. And of course, when the last item goes up, not everything has actually reached the chest. So you'll find every other one, there's a block. There's another one there. There's another one there. And there is another one there. So you do lose some items in the tower not many but you do lose some so it is not a perfect system it always requires stuff to be in the bottom but it is a relatively cheap system and this can go as high as you need it to it's really really great but if you want everything to get to the top even when the bottom is empty what you need is a self-powering system so let's go and have a look at that so the self-powering system starts off very very similar to the not self-powering system, but it does have a few differences. So for example, we don't put this comparator into subtract mode, no, and we don't use a repeater. We just stick a block straight on it. And on the side of that block, we put a redstone torch. On top of that block, we put another block. So the redstone torch has a block on top of it. And then we put a block next to that block there. We stick a bit of redstone dust there. And then on that part, we stick another block, so we've got like this V shape, and under that we need to stick a torch. And again, the not gate principle will turn that torch off. And then what we want to do is we want to get a block here. So a block on the next one up. Don't forget to press crouch, I do that every time. A block on the next one up, which is great. And then on top of that, we're going to stick a repeater. No, not a repeater, a comparator, like that. 
So what that's going to do is when the item goes from there to there and into there, as the first one does makes it do, that is then going to detect that it's got power as a result of that comparator, which is brilliant. And then we cut a block onto that comparator there. And all we do is basically repeat the system uh, that we put before. So that's got a redstone torch there. We stick a block on top of that. That gets uh, a block next to it and underneath it. That gets another V-shape like that. We stick a piece of redstone dust there. And here we get a redstone torch and stick it under there. So, And then we're just going to repeat that over and over until we get to the top. And there you've got it. You've got it repeating all the way to the top. Redstone's there. The torches are there and the blocks go right to the top. We have nothing in the chest. So let's just test this self-powering system by sitting on here and throwing these into the hopper. There they go, off they go, inside, and up it goes. You can hear it ticking away, ticking away. You can hear the burnout clocks going, you hear that hissing sound. That's these clocks going far too fast for the torches to cope, and that is what's powering this system to go all the way to the top. And this one's pretty fast. You can see those comparators going on and off as it shoots those blocks all the way to the top. And now after even less time, because this is a much faster system, all of these comparators here you can see are off, which means none of these blocks have got any things in them. None of the hoppers have got anything in them, which means, I hope, that we have got 64 in the chest at the top. So thank goodness that actually worked. That's a really, really effective system, and you can do that again, just like this one. You can do that as high as you want. It's a really great way of getting items from maybe a deep mine all the way up to the surface without you having to carry them backwards and forwards. It's a really, really good system. And it's a little bit more expensive than that one behind, but it is still not too bad. So that's the main part of this one done, but I just want to talk for a minute about pistons, because pistons can be quite interesting and useful things sometimes, to be honest. So what we've got here is a single piston, and we want to power that, and the easiest way I find personally to power a piston is not by using redstone, but by using a repeater. The reason for that simply is because repeaters are directional, and they make sure that the signal is at full strength before it goes into that piston. Now I'm doing this sideways just to demonstrate. Obviously this works exactly the same way going up and also going down. But if we put some power into this particular thing and we press a button, let's get our button, where is it, a button there, that's going to power that and it goes, opens and it closes. That's really, really simple. But what if we want to, I don't know, create a double extension? Now we can have a right old play with this just by changing the timings of these comparators. Now the first thing you can do here is you can get a comparator there, get another piece of redstone. So the same pulse powers the same comparator. Now they're at, they're at the same tick level. and Actually, this is going to make pretty much nothing happen. All it's going to do is it's going to send the first piston out. See, it's just like that, and it brings it back. So you can extend it, and it, because it's a sticky piston, it brings it back. But if we were to change and play with some of these timings, what happens, look, that first one, and then it ejects it. So, and then do it again, and it retracts it. So you can play around with these timings until it starts doing stuff that you want it to do. So that just pushes it out and brings it back. Again, pushes it out and brings it back. But if we were to stick another comparator uh, repeater here and stick some more redstone there, that is gonna do something different again because this will now push power into that piston once it has opened, but not before. So let's play with these a little bit. What happens there? Look, it double extends and it brings it in again. It double extends and it brings it in again. So if you were to, I don't know, put some kind of, uh, maybe a slime block. So I'll tell you what, let's actually do that. Let's get ourselves some um, immovable objects, which is, uh, I think personally, a furnace this works really, really well because simply they are a lot cheaper. So we'll stick some furnaces there and then we'll get a slime block there's a slime block, we'll stick that on there as well. And then we'll come out, stick a slime block on there, and then you could get, I don't know, another item there. Like that. And now what happens when we do this? See, that pushes that all the way up that way, and it ejects it because of the pulsing. And then, if we do it again, what happens? It brings it back again. So you can start to play with some of these uh, timings and these pistons. So if you uh, perhaps put to that there like that, that ejects it and it leaves it there. And if you do it again, it just leaves it there. Put that back to one tick, stick it out, 
and it pulls it back and then maybe you can even play with triple extensions and what I do is I invite you to just play with these things and see what happens when you do different types of timings with different numbers of repeaters and you can get different kinds of effects which will give you different results in every circuit so if we were to change the ticks on that again and whack that out that puts the middle one out and nothing happens that puts the middle one out and nothing happens if we change the tick on that now that triple extends it nearly nearly but not quite and then if we press it again it does that so you can see how that changes everything up and then stick a different number of ticks on there and that brings the first one back so you've got all kinds of games that you can play with with these types of things so let's just stick that there like that and stick another piece of redstone there and you start building up monstrous circuits that do different things so you can see how you can have a really good play pistons are awesome things and you can do all kinds of really complicated circuitry including some really really clever closing doors which I'm not going to cover in this tutorial by using double and triple extender pistons so that is just a little bit more redstone for you. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. If you've got any comments, perhaps you've got a much better way of using the pistons than I have. I am not an expert at pistons, but I do know how to make them attach and retract and stuff like that with various timings. But it'd be great to hear your ideas or maybe even your designs. That would be absolutely awesome. If you have enjoyed this video, please do make sure you hit that like button really, really squarely full in the face. It would be really great to hear whether or not you've enjoyed it because then I know to make some more and also if you haven't already make sure you hit that subscribe button it'll be great to see you in my sub club and i'll look forward to seeing you in another video you take it easy now bye